Windy Strawberry Frosty is back for the summer. So whether it's beach time, a tea time, or me time, it can always be frosty time. Choose Windy Strawberry Frosty today. Now open till midnight or later. Limited time only. Participating U.S. Wendy's hours may vary. At 21st Amendment Brewery, we can feel that summer is right around the corner. And this year, be prepared for the ultimate summer of sips with the return of our Hell or High Watermelon Wheat Beer, an American wheat beer brewed with real watermelon. Whether it's the crack of a bat, the smell of an afternoon barbecue, or just lounging in the sun, Hell or High Watermelon is the crisp companion you've been searching for. Now available wherever wheat beer is sold. Or find one at 21st-amendment.com. You can't imagine what the halftime discussion was with Lucci. He's a very calm character, but I'd, I'm pretty sure he's told him he was disappointed with, with the way they applied themselves in the first half against this St. Louis team that was on the field. St. Louis controlling in their own half. Yarrow doesn't like what he sees to the interior or the exterior, so now comes across to Parker, who backs up to Berkey. He's pursued by Jabo. He's just got to get it out of there and sends it into the circle. Zubrich, I mean, a bit of pain here, kind of grabbing at that right shoulder. Went down awkwardly as he tried to clear that ball away. Something to keep an eye on. Uh, yeah, <laughs> because there aren't too many options for the Portland Timbers. They're hoping uh, some help is coming, but it's not here yet. Here's a ball swung in by O'Toole and a hit save forced by Ivacic. His Magno's header forced Ivacic to dive down to his right and parry that one away. Big time save from Ivacic. Wasn't a lot of heat on it. I think Ivacic maybe was surprised at the direction that that one came in, but he did well to just pop it back out, popped it directly back out towards the penalty spot. And maybe lucky there wasn't a better chance that came from NYCFC there as Kalaskan cleared the second shot that came from Pellegrini. Here's O'Toole hitting across again. Ivacic forced into a save. That was looking top shelf in that back post and Ivacic his hand gets in the way and now the Timbers look to come out on the counter a couple big saves for Ivacic in the last couple minutes here's Mascara dribbling at O'Toole he'll go central looking for Bully goes over the top of Bully shouts for a handball on Gray inside the box and then Gray just plays it straight out to Gio Savarese it'll be a throw in for Portland Nima Sagafi is going to hold the restart here just to make sure and quickly announces that both arms were down and in a natural position. That was fourth official Daniel Radford making that assessment very quickly. Well, and I knew it wasn't a handball because Frank Bully and Marvin Lareo were right there. And if they saw it, they would have said something. They just kept playing. It was the crowd, I think, that got excited. Here's the Timbers. Kalaskan sprays it out wide to Bravo. Bravo lifts one over the top. Cheneau comes over to clear it away. Parks and Cheneau actually run into one another. And now Sagafi's holding play for a moment, blows his whistle again. We'll get that throw in. Tavon Gray wins the header. Linich pops it over his head with his right boot. Headed along by Pellegrini Central, picked up by Diego Chara. Now to Evander. Evander lifts it over the top for Luria. Gray there to knock it away, though. Great athleticism by the Bronx native in his fourth year with NYCFC. And then a clash of heads. Tavon Gray and Noel Calascon. And a foul is going to be called on Gray here. Both training staffs will come out as it was a collision of heads, but Nima Sagafi immediately pointed to a restart for the Timbers, and this will certainly be a dangerous opportunity for Evander and Portland when we get this back underway as multiple NYCFC players coming over to complain at Nima Sagafi. It did look like two players rise rising for the ball, and unfortunately getting each other more than the ball itself but it's possible that gray went up with the arms went through the back colorado trying to keep the earthquakes in this game 
Because it's going to be a Denneran from the spots. Daniel not too happy about it. Daniel jumping up and hitting the crossbar. I don't know if he's trying to distract the Denneran or what. Here we go. The Denneran getting set. 1-1, 58th minute. Here we go, and he scores. 2-1 St. Louis, 58th minute. San Jose trailing once again. When all is said and done, it's a good penalty kick taken by Adenaran. Nice and calm, he sent Daniel the wrong way, and he striked it into the, bottom, the right-hand side of the net, and it's a calmly well-taken penalty. And the earthquakes are going to go again, Ted. Well, that's the question, Dangerous. They came out with a head full of steam to start off this second half. How do they not let this deflate them, but rather invigorate them? I don't think it will. I think they've shown that now they can compete, and they started this second half really well, and that one went against them. And I I don't agree with the call, but it is what it is, and they have to dig deep and have to fight again. My only concern right now is the fitness of Jamiro Montero and whether or not he can continue in the match. Ball played up the near touch line is... Berkey had to come out of his area, and Jackson Yule got kicked in the face from Jackson. And I don't think the Quakes players are happy with Jackson. And I don't mean the one on the floor. I mean the one in the white shirt for St. Louis because I don't think they agree with that call as well. And he no. created that contact, and so, now he's kicked Jackson Yule in the face as well. So Jackson will get a yellow card here. There's the chance from the fans showing their opinions of the official. Echo around PayPal Park. 2-1 the Quakes trail here. It's just a hand to the face in the end on Jackson Yaw. Wasn't that bad by Jackson. And, but at the end of the day, it was there. And the yellow card has been issued. And the young St. Louis player needs to calm himself down. You can see Bradley Carnell was telling him to just be smart. And keep your head in the game because at the moment he's the target for not only the Earthquakes players, but also the fans at the moment as well. <laughs> you will be attended to by the trainers. The PG&E and the Quakes are excited to again serve local youth this year through our Kicks for Kids program presented by PG&E with the goal of providing local youth with the chance to attend matches with their families thanks to your kind donation. 100% of donations go towards hosting these special guests, including 1,000 tickets donated by PG&E. To help donate to the program, visit www.sjearthquakes.com slash tickets slash kicks for kids. Quakes get it back in play. Mensa, Trauco, and up the left wing intended for Skayen, but too far to the interior. And Berkey will grab this and pick it up inside his area. 60 minutes gone by, 2-1 St. Louis in the lead. He sends it down the pitch, and it's swatted back into the St. Louis half. But Yarrow will head it back to the San Jose side. But Mensa gets it to Acapo. Quickly on the move is Acapo. Does an about face at the touchline. Brings it inside to Montero, who's hounded, getting it to Acapo. Now Yule back healing to Montero. Montero keeping the ball and getting tripped up, going down. And this ball is sent skyward along the near touchline. Mensa getting a flick on it towards Yule, but still anybody's possession. Finally, Mensa settling to Gruezo, gets it back to Rodriguez. He'll give it to Daniel. Daniel gives it a quick left-footed slap to the outside. Mensa, Gruezo. And now Rodriguez, left wing Trauco. That's well played by the Earthquakes there. Just to calm it down, get good position, and good, good possession of the ball as well. Knocked out of play far side by Yarrow, the center back for St. Louis. San Jose's throw in 62nd minutes. Trauco forcing one inside for Skayen. Skayen back to Trauco. End line, cross. No one's there. Picked up off the bounce by Berkey. Espinosa was crashing, but he was about two, three steps behind where he needed to be, and the ball was cleanly handled by Berkey at that point. 62nd minute, 2 1 St. Louis in the lead. 
with Skehan sort of in that flat four in the midfield now and on the left-hand side, it's given license to Traco to try and get forward a little bit more on that left-back position. And Jack Skehan is clever enough to be able to, uh, and disciplined enough to be able to track, sort of track back and cover, cover for him. Here's the ball bouncing towards the top of the St. Louis 18. Espinosa was in the vicinity, but Parker and Hybert are able to keep it away from him. Now Blom center circle pass intended for Adenera, and he can't possess cleanly. He rolls it to the outside, and now here comes St. Louis on the attack. Wide to Adenera, marked by Rodriguez. Adenera muscles through into the 18. Left-footed pass, wanted Watts, and then Jackson couldn't control for St. Louis, and Espinosa jumped in and knocked it away. And here's Espinosa controlling on the right wing. Worked, crossed, deflected out. And it's a corner for San Jose, 63rd minute here. It's fantastic work, isn't it, by Christian Espinosa. A long bursting run down the right-hand side, being chased all the way by Hibbert. And he's created a corner kick for his team. And with his service, these are dangerous with the earthquakes. Well, Montero's gotten his first tonight. Why not Mensa or Rodriguez? 64th minute, Quakes trailing 2-1. South end of the stadium to the left of Berkey. There's some good natured pushing and shoving going on. Here's Espinosa lobbing one, headed on and over the bar. Once again, it was a capo as those two seem to have figured out a way to connect on set pieces. Capo unable to find his third goal of the season there, however. 64th minute. Goal kick now for St. Louis. 2 1. They lead at Stanford Healthcare. We are pioneering care specifically for the LGBTQ plus community from preventative wellness to gender affirming care, including innovative specialized surgical techniques. Our LGBTQ plus health program sets the standard for making our patients feel safe, affirmed and seen. Be seen with care. Learn more at stanfordhealthcare.org slash LGBTQ. Controlled on the outside by Stroud, who's been a little bit more quiet in this game than I expected. He draws a foul from Yule. Free kick St. Louis about eight yards into the San Jose half. This will be left of the circle, closer to the near touchline against St. Louis. Attacking right to left on your radio dial towards the north end, Lobina. San Jose attacking left to right. Not many other options. Watts to Blom and Parker. Parker sees Jackson trying to lob one over the top for him. And Capo can't settle out of play. Throw in St. Louis. 65th minute, 2-1. Quakes trailing. Blom off the throw-in, hounded by Yule. And then Parker throws one into the 18, and Daniel out of his six to grab. Hurls it to his left to Trauco. Trauco sees all. Gets it up to Skayen, back to Trauco. Rodriguez. to Rodriguez. Grueso tries to thread the needle. Stroud steps in front, picks it off. Now it's forward. Now Adenarin off the left elbow being marked by Acapo. He'll be overlapped by Stroud, but Adenarin still staying with the ball. Pushed off a bit. Stroud recovers, throws it towards the 18. Yule gets a clear. It's one back now to Jackson on top of the arc. Quicks handle it, but still can't get it clean. Now Grueso finally gets it out to the right wing to Espinosa, and the ball just out of reach as he tries to snag it out of the air. A throw in now for St. Louis. Yeah, a sloppy few minutes there, especially for the Earthquakes, giving the ball away far too easily, trying to force the issue as they build out the back and then turn after turnover after turnover going on from Jackson Yor and also Jamiro Montero. Quakes win it back. Rodriguez gets it to Berkey. Or excuse me, Rodriguez gets it to Daniel. <laughs> Wrong end. Switching sides. Gruezo, someone doesn't get the call for essentially wrap tackling home. I guess they missed some of them. And now Adenarin gets around Mensu, got tripped up. Here's Adenarin into the 18, crossed in front, back post! Sent high and into the scoreboard. Perez 
tried to make a sliding finish, set it high. He'll be brewing that missed attempt if the Earthquakes can find the equalizer in soon, as that's what they're aiming to do right now. Espinosa, right wing off the right elbow, cuts to the inside. Espinosa! Just high! My goodness! The release off that step inside danger. That was brilliant. End to end. First of all, St. Louis have a chance to win the game, put this game away 3-1. to one. It's a miss by Perez, and immediately Espinosa the other way with a fantastic cut into the inside, a left foot rocket, and once again it's Berkey with a fingertip. And I would say world-class save on that one. That's a fantastic effort. That's Two is that. Corner Espinosa, and it's popped straight up by Yarrow, and out another corner for San Jose. Berkey has made some incredible stops. His ears played short on top to Trauco. Wanted a repeat of a couple weeks ago against Philadelphia. Shot was blocked, and it's sprinted to the outside by Alm. Back heel pass for Watts, who can't control. Back to Alm. Picks it up in chaos. Gives it to Stroud. Now Watts, who has a clear path into the 18. And Rodriguez recovers and gets it out. San Jose just needs to settle things a bit, Danger. Yeah, I think so. They're trying to, yes, I mean, obviously they want to get back into the game, but they're trying to force it just a little bit too much. I'm still not convinced that Montero, after he scored a fantastic goal, but he got heavily hit on the challenge that came across as he put it in the back of the net. He's fully fit, and I'm thinking Lucci's going to go to the bench, and he'll probably be one of the players that will be substituted. As here's a chance for St. Louis to dinner and playing it centrally to Jackson. Poking it away at the last second is Trauco. Kakanovich and Buda are about to sub on for San Jose. It looks like we've got men coming for St. Louis as well. These substitutions will be brought to you by Intermedia. It's Espinosa. Can't control along the near touch line in traffic. It's one back by St. Louis. Flicked on, intended for a Denneran. And now the Earthquakes get it back. Here's Espinosa. Wants to stay in, cut off by Yarrow, sweeps it aside. And finally Perez gets underneath it, but he can't control far touchline out of play. So Kikanovic is going to come on for Skayen, who put in a good shift tonight, Danger. He really did. He didn't put a foot wrong, but he didn't also create those kind of opportunities that you want somebody in the attacking role on the left-hand side to create. So Benji in for Skayen. And Buda coming on for Montero. And this is the question, how do they line this up? Well, they've been going in a 4-4-2, so I think that probably Benji will stay on the left-hand side and Boot will go alongside of Bobasi, but after saying that, they could also force it into more of a 4-3-3 with Buda playing underneath a Bobasi. It looks like it's going to be more of the the way they started the second half. Benji going on the left where Skehan was playing, but it's a far more attacking lineup, obviously, with Benji in for Skehan. Trauco into the 18, brought down by Buda. Can't stay on it cleanly, but able to win it back. The ball's still loose inside the 18. Cleared out far touchline, throw in San Jose. Miguel Trauco will have the honors. 71st minute, 2-1, St. Louis in the lead. Certainly when the earthquakes are firing those crosses in, there's at least three or four players in the box at this point as Lucha Gonzalez is pushing for the equalizer. Now to play near touchline. Late whistle. We've got subs coming on. As now we see Indiana Vasilev coming on for Perez and Gio Kini coming on for Jackson. Brought to you by Intermedia. Those are the two subs that they had available on the bench that I thought could make a difference. And Gio Kini scored in four straight games as a starter. He was rested for tonight's contest. Indiana Vasilev is a a player that started with Aston Villa's U team back in the day up the Villa, you know, but it's one of those situations where he came over to MLS and he's made a career for himself. Another dangerous attacking player. Thrown into Yule, back to Acapo. Acapo's service is blocked, and this will skip out of play for a corner for San Jose. (laughs) 
72nd minute, 2-1. St. Louis in the lead. Espinosa to the left of Berkey, south end. Espinosa looking for a header. It skips through everyone. Run down on the outside by Buda, recovering to Trauco. Trauco trying to battle to maintain the possession. Fights around the outside, out of play, stays with San Jose. 73rd minute, 2-1. St. Louis leading. Buda. Forced one in, that popped up, and now Capo will recover to Gruezo in the center circle. Jewel comes back on it. 73rd minute, 2-1, St. Louis in the lead. Yule and Trauco left side, far touchline Trauco. And back to Yule once again. Espinosa. Espinosa backs it up to Mensa. And now Capo for Espinosa. Lost out of play. Back to a Capo, but he can't get on that. It's knocked away. And so he sent deep into the San Jose half and out of play. It'll be a throw in for San Jose. So there's doing a good job. Good defensive shape. They dropped into two lines of four. And they're sliding across, especially sliding across when the Quakes are trying to force the ball into Christian Espinosa on the right-hand side. And they're sitting in a pretty deep block as well, aren't they, Ted? Looking, I think, to now try and use the size of Adenaran to hold the ball up for the dangerous Nicholas Giacchini underneath him. Trauco, little delay, stutters up to Abobasi. Abobas, he tried to force one through the outside to Benji. And now St. Louis unable to get this out of their own end. Here's Jabo leading things as the Quakes in the back. Jabo charging to the 18, leading Buda. Buda crosses it back. It's knocked around inside the 18. Thought there may have been a handball in there. No call is made. Now switch to the far side. Acapo. Now Espinosa. And then now we'll get a whistle. And I don't know if they were calling for a handball or the offside there, Danger. I think they called the offside on Buda, who had made the cross, but he didn't come out with the line of the St. Louis defenders, and the ball went back to him, and they called him an offside position. And yeah, they're, they're going to take the free kick from that left-hand side where Asundi Buda was. So it's 75th minute, 2-1. Well, the Quakes have had this problem on the left-hand side when Cade's away on international duty. And once again, it's another opportunity for Benji Kukanovic and even Oseni Buda to come into this game and get a goal and, and make something happen, or create a goal and get this team back tied on this game. It's a big game in the Western Conference. The Quakes need to get something out of it. St. Louis on the attack again, looking for a dinner end, but the pass was just a bit behind. The Capo recovers, getting it to Yule. 76th minute. Rodriguez. Trauco. Long diagonal switch for Espinosa. Keeps it in far touchline, right to the 18. Nearly loses it, wins it back to Yule. Now Espinosa. Acapo, byline, stops. Now back to Espinosa, cross, and it's knocked out, popped up by Gioacchini. Yeah, the cross that came in was just behind the Earthquakes attackers, and you can see where Buda tried to read it, and he got a foot on it, but it was blocked by, I think, by Tim Parker, who's struggling a little bit himself, I think, from an earlier knock. And now we've got a man down. St. Louis, so the trainers will come out. I believe that's Yarrow who is down right now. Yeah, it was him that made the block, I think, on the Buddha challenge, or the shot, as it were. The San Jose Earthquakes take on the LA Galaxy in the 97th edition of the California Classico on Saturday, July 1 at 7.30 p.m. at Stanford Stadium, presented by Intermedia. Don't miss out on the biggest Bay Area summer sports event featuring 50,000 fans, pre-match festivities, skydivers, military appreciation, a post-match firework display, and more. Get your tickets at sjearthquakes.com. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. 
The Cal Bears play here. I love it. The all new 810, the spread. 810 AM, KGO, San Francisco, Accumulus Media Station. Back at PayPal Park, 2 1. St. Louis leading 78th minutes. As we have Josh Yarrow shaking up, and we've got another sub coming on for St. Louis. I believe it's going to be Celio Pompeu. And Marie is coming on as well. So Paul Marie is going to come on for Carlos Acapo. Brought to you by Intermedia. And that's just going to be a like for like, maybe a lot more energy. This point in the game, Paul Marie trying to get up that right hand side and support Christian Espinosa. Looks like Ostrak is coming in as well as Pompeu for St. Louis here in a moment. in play. Send long into the earthquake staff. Joe Keeney and Rodriguez and Marie comes up with the possession along the touchline into Yule. Back to Marie. Making pass to Yule. Cuts it back to Gruezo to give a little, a little bit of space out to Trauco and far touchline. Benji to Buda. Buda drifting wide. Step over. A bit of a Shea Salinas look on that. Out of play. Throw in for San Jose. 79th minute, 2-1 St. Louis leading. Into Gruezo. Sweeps one through the circle to Mensa. Comes near touchline. Espinoso immediately sprints to the interior. Lifting one to no one on top of the 18. And St. Louis gets it out of the danger zone as Alm drifts to the outside. Wants Joe Akini. He gets tripped up on Rodriguez. This will bring about a whistle. St. Louis to do good, a good job of forcing Espinosa inside onto his left foot. It's not his favorite foot and at the moment. His service as he's cutting inside is just not picking out those Quakes players. So Pompeo is on for Stroud and Ostrak is on for Adenaran. Ostrak, part of that Czech new youth international team in the past, currently 23 years old, 5'9", 165 pounds. This is his 19th appearance of the year. He's got two goals and two assists for Pompeo. He's 23 years old. Hails from Brazil. Acquired from St. Louis, too. Before that was collegiate player at VCU, Virginia Commonwealth University. 63 games played there. This is his 17th appearance of the year. He's gotten a goal and assist to his name. 80th minute, 2-1, St. Louis in the lead. It's good to point out this St. Louis team had a very successful USL team that sort of was the foundation for this team now. A lot of these players played in the next successful USL team, and the younger players that, again, coming into the squad, and with the injuries they've had, they've got their opportunity. And you have to say, so far this evening, they've taken it and done a good job. Blom forcing a ball ahead. Sprinted back on. Vasilev, but unable to possess cleanly, lost out of play. Mensa up to Yule and back to Mensa plays one long over the top and Parker will watch this back to Berkey 81st minute Chakiris and Tommy Thompson about to sub on for San Jose pretty obvious that Lucci wants to freshen up that midfield This ball trickles back to Berkey, and he quickly sweeps it to the outside. Ebert, Pompeu, Ebert once again, and back through Berkey. Sent down the field, right of center. Rodriguez gets ahead on it. Vasilev does as well. Now outside Pompeu. And it's lost. Marie there to recover for San Jose. Through to Trauco. And out to Benji. Quakes need a quicker transition, Ted. You can see they're immediately they're losing the ball. St. Louis are doing a good job of getting back into a defensive shape. That is very disciplined. Two lines of four. They're tracking back the, the, the spaces between 
the defenders in the midfield is tight. Buda disrupted a ball there to help San Jose win it back, and now Trauco has it far side of the circle, gives it to Gruezo, brings it back to the near side. Now Marie on the wing, steps inside, draws a foul. It's Pompeu draws the whistle. Quakes quickly get it back in play. Gruezo center circle out on the wing, Trauco. Trauco tries to fire one in, but it deflects out of play. And now here comes Thompson. Well, not just quite yet, actually. They're going to do the throw in. Well, no, we will. All right. <laughs> so Grazo comes off for Chakiris. And Thompson. I did not see the number they fast for uh, Thompson there. I think Traco's gone on the left-hand side. Right. Paul Marie's gone left, and, and Thompson's going to go right. Ted. So right now the ball makes its way to the near side. Thompson. Grown in Thompson to Chakiris. One home grown to another. And Nico got... Tangled up, but he's claiming that he was held off the ball, and that's why he forced his way around the outside. And Joe Kini. Could be the fastest yellow card in Earthquake's history, that one, I think. That was his first touch of the ball. So Nico is booked. Parker free kick. And the Earthquake's able to handle it, getting it out to Nico. That's a good ball, Nico. Just get it out of that tight area and try and spread the ball a little bit quicker for the Earthquakes. There's Marie looking for Chabo. Parker cuts it off. And then it's cleared. And we've got a man down. Vasilev, I, I don't think Buda even touched him. I mean, spun down. Yeah, some of the dark arts coming in here with some time wasting, I think, and it's an experienced group of players now out there for St. Louis SC, and they're, they're doing everything they can to milk the clock. There wasn't a lot in that challenge, as you say, Ted, at all, if anything. 85th minute, 2-1 St. Louis in the lead. San Jose's undefeated home record on the line. They are the last undefeated team at home in Major League Soccer in the 2023 season. G controlling on the outside. Gets it back to Marie and Yule. Right now, things have stalled in the midfield for San Jose on the attack. We'll see if the new additions of Thompson and Nico can help San Jose. That is better by the earthquakes, changing the point of attack. Here's Marie getting a ball from Yule off the left elbow. Marie trying to force one in. Unfortunately, right at the defense, but Marie will atone and win it back. Gets it for Nico, but it's out too far out in front for Nico. Marie is down for San Jose, slowly getting back to his feet. And then a whistle comes in. So stay with St. Louis here in the 86th minute. Jackson Yule's asking for the earlier foul on Paul Marie, who got the contact. More contact, I have to say, than Indiana Vassalev right. got just a couple of minutes before that. Back in play. Lob towards the top of the 18 and knocked away. Out of play. Most track was the intended target. Throw in now for St. Louis here in the 87th minute. Referee has pointed at his watch a few times with some of these tactics by St. Louis. And with the injuries that's happened as well, I mean, there has to be a good, I would say, at least seven minutes of additional time. And the ball's loose on top of the Quakes 18 after the restart. And Yule able to dribble it out of the danger zone. But Thompson can't get it back. It's one back by Papayu inside the 18. Cutting around defenders, playing it on top for Vasilev. Vasilev back for Pompeo. It's out of his reach, and Espinosa dribbles to the outside, clears, 
but it's deflected out, throwing for San Jose. Nico from Thompson up to Jabo. And Jabo trying to fight the control, keeping it in play along the near touchline. Thompson back to Yule. Yule out to Marie on the far touchline. Immediately marked by Alm. We'll play a back end of the circle. Yule, Nico. Quakes are going a little bit sideways and backwards at the moment. I want to see them be a little bit more take more risk and try and f- get that ball into a uh, Jeremy Obobese, for example, who's had a very quiet night. He's had a disappointing m- night for me in, in position and giving the ball away, just like he has again there. This ball is cleared out of the edge of the defensive third for St. Louis, all the way back to the Quakes defensive third. Mensa tracking to pick it up and gets it now. Yule back into the circle in the San Jose half. Tim Parker for St. Louis doing a fantastic job of leaving that back line, Ted. You can see how they're stepping out immediately as the ball is cleared, getting back into defensive shape when they lose it. Here's Buda, left side of the 18, cross. J-Bo wanted to ride his bicycle sideways. Quakes recover. Espinosa leading Thompson. Cross back post. That's just a bit too high. Buda runs it down. Quakes, 89th minute, looking for a last gasp. Espinosa. Playing it wide to Thompson. Thompson, byline, cross, headed down. Nico rebound. Saved by Berkey, keeping it 2-1. Good work on the right-hand side, twice by Tommy Thompson, getting into a dangerous area on that byline. The first one just a little bit strong to the far post. The second effort on the cross was better when it dropped to Nico Contreras on his favorite left foot. He hit it straight to Ramon Berkey. Berkey sends it down the pitch, long, but Rodriguez is able to head this to the control of Marie. Now Yule back into the circle, 90th minute. Wakes trailing 2-1 here at PayPal Park. Nico leading Espinosa. Espinosa right side of the 18. Going to ground and knocking it out of play is Parker, and it'll be a throw-in for San Jose. Thompson in for Nico. Middle of a crowd. And that's an incredibly bad foul. Nico was playing the ball. Gio Kina ran into him. I don't know, Danger. I don't know what Nico's supposed to do there. Well, the only person on the field that thought it was a foul was obviously Vasilev, who went down on the ground, and the referee. Certainly no of the fans in here did. If there was contact, we didn't see it. Nico played on as if it was nothing to it. Now, once again, I mean, sort of like the penalty in some respects, the contact was actually generated by the player into the foot of Nico or the leg of Nico to cure us. And the player's up and no problem. Some frustration. Seven minutes of stoppage time have been on and on. And Lucci is definitely letting his opinion be known to Marcos de Oliveira, the head referee for tonight's match. Seven minutes. Seven minutes added on. Excuse me, eight. They changed it. They initially had seven on. They've added one for the back calls as well. (laughs) And this is still being discussed. Earthquakes have a few more minutes to try and find some magic and keep their undefeated home record intact. Ball out of play, throw in for San Jose deep in their own ends. And here is Nico getting upended by Pompeu, and he'll be shown yellow. Now that's a foul. Yeah, that looks like a foul to me. <laughs> and we've got a man down cramping in the center circle. For St. Louis... Well, there's a substitute ready to come on for St. Louis. I'm pretty sure the player going down with the cramps has been told to do that so they can get him off and make the sub. So it's going to be Jensen, Isak Jensen coming in, the 19-year-old young designated player, previously with Sondry Eisk of the Danish League. on 
for Alm. Yeah, it was Alm that was down on the ground. Obviously, just got the message to go down so they can make the sub. It happens in the game. Hopefully the referee is uh, recognizing these tactics. He's, he's added eight. He could add more. How is your knowledge of Danish side Sander Yeisk? I'm glad you had to say that, not me, that's for sure. I practiced that a couple of times this morning. Ball over the top. Giochini tracking back, but Mensa able to keep it away. And Giochini tried to draw the foul immediately. Gilavera not having it this time. San Jose, Rodriguez, Nico just a bit too far out in front, and this will be one back by St. Louis. He's attacking now as Ostrak, kicking it out. Jensen, Marie knocks it out of play, throw in for St. Louis, deep in San Jose territory. Far touch line about parallel to the top of the 18. And a slow roll by Watts to get over to that ball and throw it in. I'm okay with that. I mean, that's part of the game. It's the, it's the generating fouls that aren't really fouls, going down, rolling on the ground, those type of tactics. Every team in the world is going to walk to a, a throw-in when you're winning 2-1 on the road and you're into added time. Ball pinned around the top of the 18 of San Jose and picked up by Rodriguez, getting it to Thompson. Thompson to Nico. Espinosa. And this is lost to St. Louis. It's a lazy ball by Espinosa. He's really trying to bend the ball into nobody. He's giving the ball away again. Jensen to Ostrak, and nice toe poke by Rodriguez to knock it away. And here's San Jose moving forward up the left wing. Rodriguez on the center back attack. Centrally to Chabo, backs it up to Buda. Buda pushing for position, finding Tommy Thompson right flat. Thompson out wide, Espinosa. Espinosa gets it back from Nico. Moved centrally to Mensa. Mensa sees Marie, left wing. Jensen out to Mark. Sends it right back at Marie. And a ricochet is to his control. Now Mensa center circle. We're about four minutes into the at least eight that we're added on. As Nico drops it off for Espinosa. Espinosa whipping it across. Picked up in the air, and then Buda can't bring it down cleanly. Jensen turns and clears, and it's going to be Daniel sprinting out to the center circle to pick it up for San Jose. Jackson Ewell, now wide to Marie. Marie tripped up, stays on his feet, comes bumbling ahead, draws a foul. Free kick for San Jose on the left elbow, and a yellow just came in on Ostrak. He can't believe it either. There was no foul on that. Paul Marie just lost his foot and it was going down before the contact came from Ostrak. May have been a makeup goal, Andrew. <laughs> it's a free kick in a good area for Espinosa with his quality. And I mean, and nearly everybody in a blue shirt, a blue and black shirt, is in that penalty area for the earthquakes. About four minutes and 50 seconds into the Elite State that were added on. Espinosa off the left elbow. 30 outs. Espinosa into a crowd, headed on, and Berkey makes the save. San Jose recovers. Nico putting it back in. It's knocked out, throw in for San Jose. Benji got the redirect danger, and Berkey once again, who is the man of the match without question at this point. Yes, and a fantastic save. It's a good ball in by Espinosa. It's actually Rodriguez against the header, and it's a wonderful save again by the big German goalkeeper who's been outstanding. Outstanding for St. Louis SC. In for Yule. Now Mensa center circle. Back to Yule. Forward Thompson. Thompson up for Benji. And St. Louis gets it out of the danger zone. And now Daniel sends it long. Out onto the left wing. Brought down by Marie, but he can't stay with it. Jensen clears. Up to Ostrak. Fantastic ball by Daniel, and Paul Marie's got to do better with that. Spits to the outside. Pompeu met by Buda in defense. 
In towards the top of the 18, Ostrak sprinting towards the six, cuts to his right, takes a shot, it's blocked. Rebound, Blom, right side of the six, marked by Marie. And Blom will wisely slow this down, work it out towards the corner flag to eat some clock. Out, and it's going to be San Jose's. Oh, no, they're going to say it was a corner. All right. Took a bit to come to the decision. Yeah, the experience, Blom, there, just, do you say, slowing it down and doing what you'd want an earthquake player if the score was 2-1 at this point to right. do. And take it into that corner and try and get yourself a corner kick. It's exactly what he's done. And once again, St. Louis will take their time. It'll probably be a short one. And they'll try and keep the ball in that corner for as long as they possibly can. Played short, and they don't possess for very long. Quakes do get it out and up to Nico. Nico intended Benji with a pass knocked out of play. Nico will have the throw in. Into Buddha. Now Yule. Left side of the circle to the right side of the circle in Rodriguez. Rodriguez met by Pompeu. Forces his way through. Gets it to Chabo. Chabo through traffic. Now has Nico off the left elbow. Nico with options. Into the 18. Knocked down. Loose inside the area. Rebound. Now falls to Mensa. Right wing Espinosa. Knocked out of play. Throw in San Jose. We're about at the eight minute mark, but they're going to keep on going. Manson needs to stay up there and get in that box because this ball's got to get in that penalty area at some point. Thompson's cross is stuffed and won back by St. Louis. Should go long from Daniel. Daniel sending it. Left wing. Benji under it. Quakes don't turn this upfield. You feel like the whistle's going to blow. Here's the ball to Jabo. Jabo now for Nico for Thompson. Saved by Berkey. Oh, my goodness. And that's full time. Berkey is unquestionably the man of the match in this one as San Jose's home undefeated stretch comes to an end, falling to St. Louis by a final of 2-1. to one. We've got post-game coverage coming up next. A Brazilian diamond cutter created a new shape of diamond. And that shape, that cut, is elusive and distinctive. It's a shape that's hard to describe. You need to see it. It's called the cushion cut. You can find it at Shreve & Company. Because elusive and distinctive is what we do. I thought we did the rare, the exotic, and the beautiful. We do the elusive, the distinctive, the rare, exotic, and beautiful. And we've been doing it for 171 years. Find Shreve at 150 Post off Union Square. In Palo Alto, Shreve is perfectly situated in the Stanford Shopping Center. Let's face it, shopping for a used car isn't always a positive experience. But that is about to change. Honda is bringing the plus side to used car buying with Honda True Used. Shop from a selection of vehicles up to 10 years old. Plus, get a Honda-backed limited warranty and other premium benefits. Learn more online or at your local Honda dealer and discover the better way to buy used with Honda True Used. New and certified pre-owned Hondas are arriving daily. Buy or reserve yours now will make you and your family safer in an emergency. A week's worth of food and water, radio, flashlight, batteries, and a first aid kit are a good start. To learn more, visit safetyactioncenter.pge.com. During these difficult times, PG&E wants you to know about our care program, which can help customers facing economic hardship reduce energy bills. To find out about care and other programs to lower bills, visit pge.com slash care. This summer, Coors Light wants you to retire, even if it's only temporary. Take a break from your 9 to 5 for 9 holes of golf. Trade those spreadsheets for a bingo card. Or swap your office chair for a water aerobics float. This summer, welcome to temporary retirement. Coors Light, made to chill. Copyright 2023, Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Takes him out wide. Giving it back in the middle, Cordova. Too much space on his left foot. Cordova in the middle. Shot saved. McCarthy deflects out the goal. 15 yards away. Shot and goal. Ryan Gold has scored. He now has a goal and two assists in this match 
And Vancouver lead 3-1 to one against the run of play. Frankly, kept getting worse. 68th minute. LAFC just found themselves right back into the match on a giveaway by Vancouver. Veselinovic loses the clearance. Here comes Bozich in the area. Settles. Crosses in the middle. Vela goal! Ball goes wide! And just like that, after a bad miscue by Vancouver, the Black and Gold have again cut the lead to one. It's 3-2. How in the world VAR does not call that a penalty? And now the referees can hide behind the fact LAFC score anyway on a bad giveaway by Veselinovic. Bogus with a great crossover and Vela slotted it home. Sixth goal for Carlos Vela, second assist of the season for Bogus, who had a goal against Seattle last week. So Mateusz Bogus really starting to get more and more comfortable. But that, sadly, is how the game would end. 3-2 to two the final, Vancouver with 38% of the possession, but got 16 shots off, LAFC 17. Both teams, nine shots on goal. A lot of them, in, in fairness, were goals a keeper saw right into their arms. Uh, but, you know, in fairness, also, Takaoka and John McCarthy both made a couple of really nice saves. Good game if you're a neutral observer. It's the pits if you're LAFC at home to drop your second game at home and give Vancouver their first win on the road. The Whitecaps improved to 6-5-7 and seven now, 25 points in the West. LAFC dropped a 9-4-5, and five. still stuck on 32, but yeah, they're doing fine coming through so far this season and a crowded schedule. Coming up, we're going to bring you the Game Changer powered by Valvoline Instant Oil Change on the home of the Black and Gold postgame show presented by Heineken. This is ESPN LA. Becoming America's best-selling brand means you never settle for anything less. Like the Ford F-150, with its premium-grade muscle and finely-tuned intelligence, it's a beast with brains. The Ford Bronco Sport, with unquestioned toughness and capability, it's built to take on the mountains. And Ford's complete lineup of all drive SUVs gives you the power, style, and space you need for life on the go. Contact your local Ford store for exclusive offers on Ford's full lineup of cars, trucks, and SUVs. Sales focus on calendar your sales. Just a second. Listen, it's hard to balance work, family, and school. But it's easier when your university is built for students with a lot on their plate. Since 1976, University of Phoenix has helped over a million working adults earn their degree. Come see what they can do for you. Find out more at phoenix.edu. University of Phoenix, we rise for you. Okay, what's going on? What does it take to make the world's most awarded tequila? 1800 Tequila knows it takes dedication down to every drop. It's more than just harvesting the finest blue agave. It's using it in a 200-year-old recipe recognized by tequila experts as the best in its class. So when you choose 1800 Tequila, you choose taste above all. 1800, the best taste in tequila. 1800 Tequila, Proximo, Jersey City, New Jersey, 21 and older. Please drink responsibly. Sweet, savory, refreshing. Those are just a few words to describe the new Baskin Robbins Mango Nada. Our tribute to this traditional Mexican beverage combines the bright, tropical flavor of mango, the tangy cake of chamoy, and the spice of tahine classical seasoning, leaving taste buds with an unforgettably unique experience. It's the perfect way to sip in the new season. Try a mango nana today at Baskin Robbins. Sweet, savory, score. If your colors are black and gold, then you know the heart of L.A. And if you're one of four million that call L.A. home, then you're the heart that keeps LAFC going strong. As the team physicians of LAFC, Kaiser Permanente knows that a strong team needs a stronger community. And we're dedicated to helping keep LAFC, their fans, and LA at their absolute best. Because shoulder to shoulder we stand, and together we thrive. Kaiser Permanente. 200% more power, 300% longer battery life, and 100% faster charging. That's what pros can expect from Flex Power Tools. Featuring stacked lithium battery technology, this game-changing power keeps pros on the job and off the sidelines so they can outwork, outperform, and outlast the competition. And it's backed by the Flex Lifetime Warranty for all tools, batteries, and chargers. Stay in the game with Flex Power Tools, a proud sponsor of LAFC. Visit FlexPowerTools.com to check out the full lineup of 24 volt tools what does a bank like bemo know about soccer 
Well, we've been a fan for two decades. Helped over a quarter million kids take the pitch. And invested $25 million in support of youth athletes. But we're not just growing the game. We're growing the good. We're a bank that helps millions of customers make real financial progress. And that's something we can all cheer for. BMO, official bank of LAFC. BMO Harris Bank, NA member FDIC. You were listening to the Black and Gold Post Game Show. Recapping everything that went down tonight. This is the Black and Gold Post Game Show. The Black and Gold Post Game Show presented by Heineken. The Black and Gold Post Game Show is presented by Heineken. Heineken, official partner of Los Angeles Football Club. This is LAFC's head coach, Steve Chirundolo. This is the Black and Gold Post Game Show. LAFC Vancouver is a final. He's a final once again. Back to Dave Denholm. 3-2 3-2 Vancouver over LAFC here at BMO Stadium on a, a rather interesting match as it unfolded, but a tough night for the black and gold. It is time for the Valvoline Instant Oil Change Game Changer. It was Carlos Vela in the 68th, getting LAFC right back into the match just five minutes after they found themselves trailing 3-1. to one. Veselinovic loses the clearance. Here comes Bogus in the area, settles, crosses in the middle, Vela, goal! And just like that, after a bad miscue by Vancouver, the Black and Gold have again cut the lead to one. It's 3-2. How in the world VAR does not call that a penalty? And now the referees can hide behind the fact LAFC score anyway on a bad giveaway by Veselinovic. Bogus with a great crossover and Vela slotted at home. Yeah, good goal there by LAFC and Mateusz Bogus and Carlos Vela capitalizing on the mistake. Valvoline Instant Oil Change, home of the 15-minute oil change. Visit SoCalOilChange.com for locations and to score game-winning coupons off your next Valvoline Instant Oil Change. But it wasn't quite enough. Vancouver, first road win, and it is a big one for them. As Remember, they were kind of around the bottom of the Western Conference playoff spots. Huge win whenever you can come into BMO Stadium and get a victory. And they are the second team to do that this season, so a tough loss for LAFC. But the Black and Gold stay on 32 points. However, St. Louis's win on the evening has vaulted them ahead of LAFC up into first place in the West. They're both on 32 points. St. Louis has one more victory. So-